Good afternoon, Christy. Thank you for joining us today for this interview and congratulations on your many successes in the industry. Thank you. Thank my you pleasure. for having me. My pleasure. So to start off, my first question is, how long have you been an actor in the entertainment industry? I would say about 22 years now. 22 okay. years. I got my SAG card when I was in college and um, a lot of people told me I wasn't going to make it and that, oh, you don't have any credit. And I got my SAG card in Boston, Massachusetts with a filings basement commercial. Okay. And then um, my college, Emerson College, had a program in L.A. that we got a chance to do. And I told them, look, I'm not coming back to Boston. Y'all need to let me stay there for a whole year. And they were like, well, that's never been done before. And I was like, I don't care. Y'all gonna let me stay. And they let me stay. And I, um, that Filings Basement commercial paid for everything that I needed. Emerson paid for housing and all that other stuff. All I had to pay for was food, gas in my car, and cell phones. Because that's when cell phones had just come out uh, <laughs> for everybody to get it. That's when Not you couldn't everybody. call nobody. You had to call people after 9 o'clock. You were like, it's free after 9. You don't okay. even know nothing about that. What Listen, I time? had a razor back then. I definitely had free after nine. Listen, okay, Sprint. Okay, okay. So free <laughs> after nine, I had Sprint yes. too. Yes. You can see. But yeah, that was the only thing I had to pay for. And then I booked seven shows in six months. Like I was just on fire, especially when, when I first moved here in LA, everybody was like, oh, you don't have any credit and you don't have this. And um, the agent found me and then they were like, do you have anything? And I said, well, as far as like a demo reel. And I said, oh, all I have is this little um, short that I did in school and I got this Filings Basement commercial and they saw it and they were like, hey, we'll take you on. And everything else is, I guess, as they say, history. That's what's up. So would you say that's how you got your foot in the door? Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Emerson College really set me set me up for, for a win. And it's really because of a guy named Brad Lamack. Um, he is a professor at Emerson College and he basically taught me the business of acting. And mm. because of the business of acting, which you know all about, <laughs> I got it from him. Right. Because uh, I told him, I want to learn how to be my own manager. And he was like, no, I'm going to teach you the business of acting. And at the time, he was writing the book. And my story was so successful, um, booking those seven shows in six months, by what he taught me it turned into uh, the curriculum at Emerson. So all the students after me now had that program. And, and I think a lot of people are successful. I don't know that many people coming out of my class were working actors that actually used their degree, but I was definitely successful because of this guy, yeah. That's amazing to hear. That's actually great. Would you give him the only praise for how you got into the industry or is there anybody else that actually helped you get into the industry? Well, there were a lot of people. I mean, you know, I had, um, what he taught me to do was interview everybody in the field. So a lot of those people like Ruben Cannon gave me a lot of um, insight. Uh, Ruben Cannon was uh, a very big time casting director back in the day. Um, Steve Harvey, you know, I was an intern on Young Little Restless and a show called Vibe, which was right across the hall on the CBS lot. Mm -hmm. And Steve Harvey would like look at me and goes, Come here, let me tell you something about this business. <laughs> I can tell you feel the fear of the Lord. So let me tell you about this business. And he would sit me down and give me all of this info. And okay. then we were all like, by that time, and I had booked those shows and he knew me, you know, um, we would be at different cast parties and rap parties like Moesha and Sister Sister and Steve Harvey show and all these different rap parties and the Will Smith show. And I'd be running around there like, hi everybody, <laughs> sweetie, see me, hire me. I'm so nice, I'm such a nice girl. Oh my God, please hire me. I'm dead. <laughs> and he, he looked at me, he was like, come here. And I was like, yes, Mr. Harvey. He's like, you don't see me run around here smiling up at people's faces. And I was like, what is he talking about? And then I saw this girl who was just like me. She was just a little bit older. Everybody thought we were sisters. And I saw the way that Chris Rock and Missy Elliott and Jamie Foxx and all these people were looking at her like, oh, here we go. Somebody who's trying to get in. And I was like, oh, that's what he was talking about. And that's when I stopped and what, what I learned from that was now I don't talk about anything that I don't know anything about. I'm okay. not trying to sell myself. 
If I go up to somebody, I'm going to have a regular conversation with somebody. And then, then right there, we'll feel the vibe. It, the question actually would be, do I even want to be friends with you? Right. Because another time he uh, told me, you know, he talked about the casting couch and because he pulled me aside, what it did was it made me go, oh, I really don't need to be in this atmosphere. It's like a Jamie Foxx party. Look, Jamie Foxx parties for a while. <laughs> especially during that time i don't know how he is now but they were wild right and i remember like going going like going to the party and going oh my god but i have to be here and and i remember one day steve was like you don't have to be in those situations and i ended right. up leaving because i was like this isn't my vibe right and i left and mm -hmm. because i left i ended up hanging out with some people from my college and i'm sorry from my church and that's how i ended up booking some of my tv shows was meeting those people Okay. So, so Steve kind of just kept me really being who I really am and not trying right. to set myself to make it in this business. So then you said through all of your experiences and Steve Harvey and being in those different atmospheres and spaces, you kind of found yourself and also by being in church. So with you finding yourself and you finally being booked for all these different shows, what have you done in an industry so far? Right after all of that stuff happened, I, I, I booked a TV show called Passions. It was an NBC show. Um, soap opera that I actually booked. It was so funny. So I had this pilot that my very first pilot that Pamela Asme Andrews, who's the casting director, uh, got me in. It was an um, MTV show. Mm -hmm. And they gave me a stand and ovation after we wrapped the pilot and I was all excited. And then we found out some people were being recast. Mm -hmm. And all the cast members were like, well, we know it's not you, Christy, because they loved you. Well, right. guess who got the axe? And you can guess how I found out how I got the axe. How? My best friend at the time was auditioning for my part because I called her. I was like, oh, my God, uh, my pilot got picked up. And she was like, Christy, um, I'm auditioning for your role. And I was like, uh, what? And at that time, we knew there was only going to be one black girl on the show. Like, right. <laughs> We knew, like they tried right. to play it off and make it seem like, oh no, 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 it's we're just auditioning sides, and we're like, yeah, right, we know. Right. So, um, so for nine months after that, I boohooed, I cried, I like, I'm never gonna work again. I suck as an actor. Why did they recast me? And you know, I took myself through a whole bunch of drama and trauma. Um, and then, um, and at that time, I, it was really crazy because I lost my boyfriend, my ex-boyfriend who I was in love with, uh, was get, got engaged, my roommate moved out, my car broke down, and I lost the pilot all in the same week. So I thought my life was over. Oh, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I mean, at like 24, I was like, my life is over. Right. And then nine months later, um, as that those months kept going, I ended up volunteering at church and working with the kids and like taking my mind off of me and my sorrow, my woe is me, and mm. focused on working with other people and blessing them. And then I got an audition for Passions um, that changed my life. And thank God that I ended up booking Passions because that other show did 90 episodes and I did over 300 and some change on Passions. Oh, wow. And, um, okay. and it was, yeah, it was a testimony because here I was thinking my life was over and God was like, no, I got something better for you. Right. Because it's been in store and Passions ended up um, changing, like completely changed in my life. And I believe that the reason why I have so much stardom with my fans right now is because of that show. But okay. I did say something just in case people are watching and they're like, wait, you didn't finish your story. I booked all on the same day. I booked a pilot for Warner Brothers. I booked Passions and I booked a commercial and I had to make a choice and I went with Passions. Okay, but that was so, a glow up though. So obviously it was good for you. Yeah, no, I mean, it was it was amazing. But um, I'm sorry, I'm looking at it on my wall because it's, that's why I keep looking over because I okay. got it up on my wall. Awesome. <laughs> I keep looking at the- Are you adding a picture? Um, let me see. Let's see if I can get over there. Um, I am right. Can you see me here? Okay. We see a poster child. We see it. <laughs> yeah. That was my, that was my You have long straight black hair too. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I just cut my hair and then I got my wig over here, y'all. Just so y'all can see. Listen, that's diversity. my wig. We got diversity. Yeah, that's my, 
that's my wig that I have on. That Usually my hair looks like that, but I, I just cut it. And then of course, you know, we're pretending as though we're, you know, really doing something over here. And of course I got my little footies and shorts <laughs> on. I got, you know, I made all this. Real, movie. huh? Yeah, you know, listen, listen I'm just letting folks this know. is a pop party at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? But, um, but yeah, so just so uh, to answer your question, um, you know, I did Passions, Moesha's Sister, Sister Steve Harvey, Kenan and Kel, Seventh Heaven, uh, all of us, Eve, uh, Castle, um, Goliath, which is on Amazon now, and then, um, of course, my new TV show that I have. Um, which is Craig Ross Jr.'s Monogamy on, um, so, I mean, I'm sure that there's more stuff, but I can't think of it. Steps of Faith right now is going to be airing um, on Easter, uh, which is going to be great. Yeah, I'm just like, oh, my, my, my Christian movie, my faith-based. Where's it airing? Faith-based. On Aspire. Okay. It's going to air on Aspire, so you can check it out there. A lot of people, it's been viewed millions of times and so many people are in love with it so yeah it's great to hear so i know you yeah. have had this extensive journey and you had some ups and downs and you have a you have a lot of credits under your belt would you actually say though that being an actor has been beneficial for you listen the industry has been great to me one of the reasons why um a lot of people don't like la is because they're not working they end up not being a working actor mm -hmm. But the industry has been good to me, and I always feel like the times that it wasn't good to me, you know, one of my teachers, he says, journal into what you're, what you're feeling, what your experience, what you felt like happened, mm -hmm. and then read it over and then find the lie. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times we lie in there, you know right. what I mean? Like, oh, you know, they were racist and blah, 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 blah. And I did have some moments where they were like, yeah, we're not going black, oh. you know, or yeah, we had to fight to get you in the room because you were the only black girl that they would let in. You know, this was one of the, this was two networks, networks, not, you know, we're talking like oh, so network, NBC, network. ABC. Yeah. You know what I mean? CBS, those type of networks. The umbrella companies. Right. Um, so yes, I've had some experiences like that, that really crushed me, really completely, um, affected me to the point where, you know, I was afraid to audition, mm -hmm. you know, um, because I, I just was like, oh my God, they're, they're probably not going to see me because I'm black or I'm not going to, you know, why put in all this effort? But then it really, it was also an excuse to not try to right. fail, to, you know, and if I tell the truth in it, you know, it made me realize like, no, you probably could have gotten that role. Maybe not those two. Were <laughs> right. doing that, you know the ones I mean? that were. Uh. <laughs> but the ones that really, I remember still having that attitude, feeling like, oh yeah, they're not going to go black. And then they ended up hiring two black people. And that was on NBC. And I was like, wow, maybe if I had just really tried. But the fear took over and it was a good, good excuse to, to not try and to, you know, to not give my all. So the industry has been good to me up until the point where um, I stopped trying. You know what I mean? And that was part of the reason why I moved to Atlanta when I met you, you know, um, because um, I wanted a fresh start. I wanted something new. And the people in Atlanta really appreciated my, my resume. And then I booked like three months there. I booked a movie with Robert Redford and Nick Nolte, even though they cut me out, bastards. Um, <laughs> I was really mad because I was like, that's a good scene. I wear Robert Redford and Nick Nolte. And you know what he said to me? Robert Redford was like, you're really good. <laughs> you know what I mean? I have five lines scared out of my mind just to say these lines. And yet, when I was doing stuff, I, I filmed Steps of Faith, um, I think a week before or something like that, mm -hmm. which I'm the whole entire movie. I'm in every scene except for two scenes. Right. And yet, I had no issues with that. Wasn't scared or anything. I get five lines with Dick Nolte and Robert Redford, and I'm scared out of my mind. So Same. you just never know. There's no rhyme or reason to this. With that being said, you mentioned some of your challenges. What are other challenges you've faced in the industry? Part of, I think the challenge is with doing this business is that you really have to self-motivate. 
you really have to stay on top of what's happening in the business, doing your research, staying self-motivated. Sometimes you can get to a place where you think, oh, you know, I just came off of such and such. I should blah, 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 blah. And a lot of times we can get to a place where we feel like, yeah, but I'm such and such. Why do I still have to audition? And that can be a challenge, you know what I mean? Because people's egos get in the way. So ego could be one of them that is a challenge. Um, I think the other thing is staying up with the trends, you know, because I remember when the reality shows started coming in and everybody was like, don't do reality. Don't do reality. All my agents. And, you know, I kind of had like a reality shows and all the people blew up. Right. You know out here mean? doing a lot. Listen. Listen, it will get down to me and somebody who uh, was on a reality show and the reality show would get it because they had, well, at the time, they didn't even have followers. It was just that they had a fan base, that, you know, or maybe MySpace was, uh, you know, at the time and then Facebook became popular mm -hmm. and then it became Instagram. And as you get older, I think part of it is you don't want to jump on the new trends because you're like, oh, it's kind of like your grandparents or your parents that are like, oh, I don't want to use a cell phone. And then you realize you have to use a cell phone. You have to learn it. So now you're learning it late, but now, yeah. right, you know, or computers or whatever the case may be. But that was kind of what was happening with social media. We were kind of jumping on it late as opposed to the new people who jumped on it so quickly and now they got millions of fans. So now the biggest challenge that we have is um, here you have somebody who is who's seasoned, who's been doing it for a long time, is now going up against somebody who's never really acted before, but they got a high social media following because they got millions of followers, whether they're real or not. And so it'll get down to, I remember, it'll, it'll get down to that person who can really act and a person who has a lot of social media followers. And I remember sitting in an office with somebody when they were making a decision between two actors and they went with the person who had more social media because they were like, hey, this is gonna be a quick turnaround mm -hmm. of the project. So we're gonna have to use those followers to get people to watch this particular right, show. Or whatever. Behind the show. Yeah. Not that it makes, you know, we don't know if those people are going to follow over there, but, you know. Thought in the industry. Yeah, I mean, that that ends up being some some of the challenges that we go through now, because, you know, I have, you know, what, 30,000 social media followers, which is not a lot, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So, um, it really. 3,500. <laughs> okay, well, it really starts to boil down to that. and. Mm -hmm. I think for actors, for me, when I hear other actors complaining and getting upset about it, I'm like, yeah, well, then you need to get up and stop being lazy and get on your social media and make it happen. Right. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, I can't get mad at them for that's what, because that's what they're doing. They're out there being creative. And I Absolutely. think the newer generation is just cranking out material really quickly. And that's how people are getting on. Look at Issa Rae. She right. started off just doing her stuff on a, you know, like a YouTube channel. And now look how hot she is. Mm -hmm. You know, so you can't get mad at people like that. Um, and and you, I admire people like that. You know what I mean? I have to get out of my own way and get out there and make some stuff happen instead of just waiting for the traditional way of allowing them to say if I'm good or not or, you know, I got the role. With so many challenges in the industry and Instagram, well, social media in general being a powerhouse, and how you get booked or how you get seen, how are you staying afloat in the industry? Talent, really, relationships. Um, you know, a lot of the stuff I'm getting and, and um, it's relationships that I've had, you know, like the Craig Ross Jr. has been out giving me my new show. We're on our third season. Plug. <laughs> Love them, and it's hot right now. Let me tell you, I've gotten stopped, like, you know, I thought it was just going to be this little show because, you know, my friends are the ones that called me and said, hey, Christy, you want to come do this? And I was like, yeah, sure, whatever, which is Craig Ross Jr. and his wife, Karen Ross. 
they ended up calling me and asking me to do it. And then it became a hit and people have been stopping me. I'm at a Janet Jackson concert or at the, you know, oh my God, I just finished that season. Or, or, you know, I'm at the airport. People are hitting me up on my social media. And, you know, it became, uh, it's becoming a really hot, hot, hot show. Because people are like, oh my God, I can't believe you slept with such and such. And da, 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 da. And, you know. On the show, on the show. (laughs) Yeah, but on the show, on the show. On the show. (laughs) Right. So there's still some traditional ways that you're still auditioning. It's just sometimes the series regulars or whatever the case may be, you know, they could, they are looking at all those things in total. So if my opinion that I would give to actors um, is don't just look at talent, your talent, you should always be honing your talent, but you also got to look at social media you also got to stay in contact with people. Don't just call them when you think they're blowing up because now they have, you know, some big, huge um, show happening. You need to stay in contact with people over and over again, like, you know, once a month, keep in contact with those people so that when some opportunity does come up, you're not calling them out of the blue, talking about, hey, give me a job. Right. And it's like, um, I ain't talked to you in over a year. Right. You know what I'm saying? But click. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But if you're keeping in contact with them, you know, because out of sight, out of mind, if you're not in their minds, they're not going to hire you. They're not going to be thinking about you. With everything going on, your many successes, your ups, your downs, relationships, social media following, how is the coronavirus now affecting your work? It has been a little bit of a challenging time. I mean, it, it feels great that we're doing this interview because like I put on makeup and I got my little hair done instead of looking crazy and I got a bra which is now killing me because I probably haven't had a bra in like three weeks so like you know it's, you know it's kind of like killing me. It, took me, it took me a second to I was like wait what <laughs> no I'm like I'm like oh, 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 uh, uh. But, you know, I was in the middle of doing a show. I was doing um, a play in Syracuse, New York um, with Ted Lange, who is my mentor, who I love and adore. He played Isaac on Love Boat. He does a lot of directing. So we flew out there to do the show. And, you know, after a week of being there, it got shut down. Mm. Um, I was getting ready to shoot another big project this month. And we don't know when that's gonna happen. Um, the industry is losing $60 million a day. A day? A day. That is crazy. Even though people are like rushing to Netflix, rushing to get cable. That's all like the it- people, that's stuff that's already been pre-taped. Mm. But all of the people who normally work on a regular basis, it is $60 million lost every single day in this industry. That is so. When we come back, when we had the strike back in 2008, 2007, 2008, the writer's strike, um, you know, we thought, okay, the strike is over. We're going to get started. Things are going to be great and shows are going to pick back up. Well, it didn't happen that way. Reality shows came. All of the daytime soap operas got canceled um, because reality shows were way cheaper. So we don't know if the shows are going to come back because of this whole situation. Mm -hmm. We don't know if people are gonna stop going to the movie theaters. Mm -hmm. They could now be watching and streaming on TV, which ends up not being the greatest thing for actors or writers or directors because of the contracts that we have with producers. We're still getting paid the amount of money that we were getting paid when VHS tapes came out. So our streaming income is really not that great as far as getting paid. And I don't think people realize is that actors don't make money really on the first initial thing. Mm -hmm. What sustains us and keeps us going are the residual checks. So every time somebody streams a movie or a TV show for free, we don't get paid. Oh. So we can't make money. And, and people don't realize that you're not working every day as an actor. Would you consider Netflix streaming free? Or do you mean like the bootleg sites? I'm, I'm saying two things. So bootleg sites are streaming for free. Okay. Netflix could possibly be paying, but, um, but not all the time. You know what I mean? So for instance, um, I spoke to someone who worked on Orange is the New Black, and they did not receive residuals. 
off of that. Off of Orange is now, New Yeah. Now, I don't know if all of Netflix shows, because I do, there's a Netflix show that I get paid off of because I do a lot of voiceover work and I get residuals off of that. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if every single Netflix show is like that because I get residuals off of a show that I did on Netflix. Right. Um, but it's not always the cakes and, and the, the, the pay isn't as great as if it was, you know, if we were doing DVD sales, but nobody's buying DVDs anymore. Right. I don't even have a DVD player on this thing. I don't even know where I would put a DVD if I had one. Yeah. Exactly. My, he doesn't have a player either. So. Exactly. So, so we don't, we don't really get paid. Um, and matter of fact, we were supposed to be in negotiations um, starting in May, which I'm not sure how that's going to happen. You know, if that's going to happen or, but um, it's just a crazy time right now. And, and, and we're not sure how things are going to bounce back, you know, and, and will things be picked up or the shows that projects that I have planned for the rest of the year, are they even, are they going to lose their funding? Right. You know what I mean? Um, just all of that. The other flip side of it is that there could, they could be so hungry for content that everybody might be working because everybody's trying to catch back up for the two months or three months that we're, we're on vacay. So with you being on vacay now, you're no longer working? No. Mm -mm. Nothing, nothing, not even voiceovers? Um, there are some people that are doing voiceovers. I have some friends that, uh, because we do something called looping, which is like, um, we go in and loop different TV shows and films and stuff. And um, so there are some people that are working. I just haven't really been seeking. Mm -hmm. um, last week was really tough for me just because um, I have friends and family who had lost family members to the coronavirus, like it's okay. real and some people that are in the hospital and people who had lost their jobs. Right. And it was really stressful, like trying to stay focused and positive and like wanting to get out and do stuff and, oh, we can't go anywhere and you know, that type of thing. And so, um, but this week is better, you know, this week was better and, and some auditions and stuff are coming through. And so I'm back to, you know, honing my craft. I teach business of acting, which you're familiar with. And so I've been working with some students doing that. Um, and so that's been rewarding just because um, I'm watching them like be successful, like looking at you, you know what I mean? And, and that whole thing, it, it brings me joy. So that's why I'm, I'm doing that to keep myself up. But now it's just motivating myself. So I've just been reading, acting books. And what I don't want to have happen is come out of this quarantine and have nothing accomplished. Right. You know, I've, if, if you've been in lockdown for two months and you got nothing done, that's going to be a little tough for me. You right. Know? I can't speak for anybody else. This might be a place for people to just rest because they work all the time. But on the flip side of it, um, there is some things that I want to get done, you know, um, online courses and, you know, writing my book and, you know, teaching more of the business of acting and learning some more monologues. Like there's so much that we could be doing, reading books, you know, it's just a matter of trying to um, stay focused on that. Has anybody in the industry or any umbrella companies made sure you were okay during this epidemic? Nah. No. Not companies, friends who are in the industry, yeah. So there's no actual like SAG protocol, NBC protocol, like, hey, if there's an epidemic, this is how we're gonna take care of our workers, our actors. There could be, but you know, I'm not on a network show at the moment. You know, my show is, you know, it's a streaming show. So it's not like it's something where it's a network where they're continuing on being like, you know, a modern family type situation. So no, no one has reached out as far as that, but people in the industry, my friends in the industry have reached out. Okay. So then how do you think entertainment in general is helping people get through this epidemic? I think it's keeping people from being, um, from going crazy, being <laughs> bad. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's tough. It's tough not really, 
you know, if, I guess for the people who have family that are with them, you know what I mean? That's a whole other situation, but I'm by myself. You know, my family is everywhere. So I worry about my mom. Um, and although I've quarantined myself, you know, I've still gone to the grocery store or maybe every blue moon I've ordered food, which, you know, I've been trying not to do. Um, yeah. But yeah, cause you don't know, you know, like this dude the other day, I was so mad. But I really wanted that food so bad. It was cheesecake factory. And I wanted a cheesecake because I was like tripping. I was like, I need something. <laughs> and then I was like fainting. I was like, it's all of me. That's how I feel about and, going outside. <laughs> yeah, you know, and so I was so mad because this dude like rolled up. It's raining. He ain't got no mask on. He ain't got no gloves on. He hands me the bag and then he trying to holler at me like, yo, oh, hey, what's up? And I was like, really? You talking over my bag, man. You spraying <laughs> your sh You know what I mean? Because every time you talk, there's going to be something that sprays out. You know what I mean? And I'm like, really? This punk right here? I got time for this? You better step on. I'm, I wanted to say put it down on the ground, but it was raining. And I want my food to get rained on. So, you know, I was mad. I was hot. I was like, yeah, you can't be doing no more of this ordinary thing. You know what I mean? Because, you know, I, ooh, ooh, ooh. So now I'm like, my 14 days started over again. So every 14, you know, every time something happened, I go out, I quarantine myself for 14 days. Don't, you know? Yeah, I'm like, but I was so mad. I was like, I really wanted to smack him in his face, but I was too afraid to, like, you know, say anything to him because then he would have kept talking and I didn't want his spray and stuff. Because I'm like, if you touching stuff, no gloves, you spreading it. Making my stomach hurt. <laughs> <laughs> but it was good. That cheesecake, that cheesecake. Listen, regardless good. of cheesecake, how important do you think entertainment, not the entertainment you just gave us, but actual entertainment is in our society? I mean, entertainment, it, it, Listen, I can't tell you how much, I mean, I've gotten letters over the years when I was on Passions or when I was on Scrubs. Oh, I forgot to mention Scrubs. Shame oh. on me. <laughs> um, but when I was on those shows, I had people that wrote to me and said how I changed their life, how I saved their life from the watching the TV shows or from interviews like this you know, that they saw and was like, I was about to commit suicide. And I read, I was standing at, I was standing at the grocery store and I never looked through a soap opera magazine, but something told me to open it. And you put in there, what's in your DVD or what's in your CD player right now? And it was, We Fall Down by Donnie McClurkin. I'm not even a Christian. I don't even listen to that type of stuff, but I went and got the CD and listened to it and you saved my life. That's crazy. And so it is, you know, people are going through things. You know what I mean? People are going through things. People are, we don't know what people are going through. We don't know people's psyche or, you know, that type of thing. And sometimes when they see us, on TV or, you know, finding an interview and, and I got to make them laugh. We don't know if there's, if we're saving their lives. You know what I mean? I've had some people that were like, I was, you know, going through cancer and I saw an interview and you talked about how your, your aunt and your, your grandmother were both, you know, had breast cancer. And I never thought somebody like you would be dealing with something like that. And so you gave me hope and I started watching Passions and you made me smile every day. I'm telling you, you just, you don't know. Even my grandmother was, when she was going through cancer, she passed. But, you know, it made her smile to see me on the show. You know what I'm looking at. I'm looking at Passions. Over right. There. Let's see. Over there. So I'm guessing those letters made you feel good then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Entertainment is, I think, is important. And it's more important that we as artists use it to change the way people see the world. Right. And that's what entertainment is for. I use it to change the way people think about black women or the way that they think about, you know, women or young women or whatever it is. I'm using them to change the way that they see people and make them hopefully think a different way. That's good. That's a good thing that people can take away from your work. So, mm -hmm. 
with the lockdown being in place, shelter in place in California specifically, what are you doing in your free time since you're not working right now? Uh, teaching the business of acting. That's been fun. Um, I have been watching a lot of TV, TV shows. I have been to watch Ozark. <laughs> Listen, I heard that's popular right now. Listen, that sucker. I was like, whoo, I need a break from them because I watched three seasons in Earth. like a couple of days. And it was, I was like, this can't get any worse. So that would definitely be a show that I would like to get on. I have no idea how I would get on it. Okay, well, with that point, though, you said you want to get on Ozark. After this yeah. shelter in place, this lockdown, this social distance order, all of this, coronavirus, everything, after that's all over, what is your next move? There is a couple of different things. We have a couple of shows that, that I'm executive producing that we're pitching. Uh, so getting to a place where I'm no longer waiting for other people to tell me if I'm good or not, or whatever right. the reasons are. It's now I'm at a place where I am looking forward to executive producing and working on the show, so, you know, starring in. Um, I'm also directing. I directed... Um, my debut musical was Suzical with, you know, 33 actors, which was um, a huge success. Okay. Uh, so I'm directing, um, which is another thing. And then I want to do um, a kid's show, um, working with young kids and talking about what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. And so that's another thing that I am um, executive producing as well. Right. So um, you mentioned your work has inspired people that you have these amazing credits and that you have a plan for after everything. Who would you say inspires you in the industry to keep going? I think the only person that really can inspire me is me. Listen, you gotta, you know? go ahead. I mean, if, if I had to say, I, I watched Halle Berry was on today and she talked about how people stay happy. That was actually inspiring. And then of course, you know, I love looking at Gabrielle Union and, mm -hmm. you know, I look, you know, all of her stuff with her baby, like those kind of things kind of keep me going and DL Hughley and, you know, I watch some of their Instagrams, but I also make sure that I censor the things that I'm looking at Very because, um, one, staying positive and not being negative. And two, making sure I tell a lot of my young people, you know, to be careful of watching that stuff because they become envious. Mm -hmm. Because then they feel like, well, why am I not successful? Why am I not doing that? Why am I not? Why am I not? Why haven't I? And um, I think we have to be careful with that type of stuff. Now, if it's entertaining you, that's one. But if it starts to change your psyche mm -hmm. and make you feel bad about you, then you have to take a you have to take a, a break. I stopped getting on social media because I didn't feel like I had anything to post. Right. You know what I mean? And I didn't want to feel bad that I had stopped posting. Mm -hmm. And I stopped posting because I don't know where I am and what I feel. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to be negative, but I also didn't want to lie. Right. So, away. right. So I took a break so that I could focus on what is the story that I want to tell and why am I on there? I don't want to be on there just because I need to make sure, you know, that I keep my followers up. You know, that's why I started to feel bad. It was like, oh, I know I got to get on here because my followers are going to go away. They which is <laughs> Yeah, right. But, and there is some truth to it. You know what I mean? Um, I tried to do an Instagram live the other day and I was like, dang, ain't nobody on here. I used to get a couple of hundred and now I got like 20. Right. You know? Let's see um, if gets a bunch of other lives. You know what's going on out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but, um, but I also can't get on there just to just be on there and try to like, Make if it's not real, right? I can't do it. I'm not going to do it. We're going to feel that. Yeah. Because also too, you know, my platform's a little bit different. Like my whole thing that I tell my viewers and fans is I, I try to keep it really real. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie to you. And I'm not going to jump on there if it's going to be a lie that can say, Oh, this is what I'm doing. And knowing I'm just sitting here looking miserable. No. I mean, I'm exaggerating, but you know, everybody makes it seem like, you know, Hey, this is what I'm doing. I'm having fun. And they're really not. Right. 
And then what does that do? Is that really helping, you know, your fans? No, it's making them feel worse. So that's why I was like, yeah, no, I can't, I can't be posting anything until I figure out, you know, what's real. So listen, you have introduced so many different tips here and there and given a lot of great takeaways. What do people need to know to get into the industry? The business side. When I tell my stories about, you know, moving to Atlanta and helping a lot of the students there, mostly people of color, just because it happened to be where I was. It wasn't that they were lacking talent. It was the fact that they didn't understand the business side. And you really have to understand the business side, which is how to stay in contact with people, how to reach out to people, how not to be a bugaboo when you're reaching out to people. You really have to understand that part of it. Um, and then the second part of it is just your talent and really staying in the know and not relying on what you knew, you know, 10 years ago, what you were doing 10 years ago has completely changed. It's not going to work in the new form. I feel like every decade, the medium changes. Mm -hmm. First it was sitcoms and it was like the big, big, big stuff. And then it became um, the, the sitcoms, which was four, four cameras. And then it became single, you know, single camera mm -hmm. that changed. And then it became about being more real. So all those people who were just doing it like, you know, friends and all that kind of stuff, that stuff doesn't really work nowadays. Right. And that was a thing that sometimes they'd be like, hey, oh my God, you were really great. You were really funny. Can you bring it down to make it more, you know, single camera? And if you don't understand what that term means, mm -hmm. you're going to be screwed. They'd be like, she was great. She was funny. He was great. He was funny. But they don't understand the genre of, of this particular show. What does single camera mean? So the difference between a four camera is going to be big, broad. Um, that would be like Friends. Okay. Single camera comedy is going to be Modern Family, Scrubs, that type of stuff, okay. which is going to be completely different. And then there's going to be a little bit of a shift of a energy shift uh, when it comes to a House of Cards or a Goliath. And also, too, that you got to understand the rhythm of a show. So um, something like Scandal is going to be completely different than a Law and Order. Right. Watch the, watch the two shows. In Scandal, you never take a breath. Mm -hmm. But Law and Order, you can have pauses. You know what I mean? Scandal, you're jumping. Everybody's jumping on top of their lines. Okay. One person says something. Next person says something. They're jumping on each other's lines. Law and order, you take your time. Dramatic pause. And if you don't understand that when you're watching a show, you can be the best actor that you can be, but they will not hire you because you do not understand the rhythm of the show. Okay, understood. Okay, free trial of the business of acting class by Christy Ferris. <laughs> Dropping dimes. How can people get in contact with you? You can reach me at on Instagram, Facebook, all Christy Ferris. I don't use my Twitter that much anymore, which is a shame. Or you can, um, you know, if you're trying to reach out and ask me any questions as far as like the business of acting, um, if you want to join, um, you can go to askchristyferris at gmail.com. Thank you again, Christy Ferris, for this amazing interview. It was a pleasure being able to dive into your career and get to know you, the real you, and seeing how you're doing during this epidemic and understanding that you're still here, still being great, and you're still looking healthy. And still thank you. You know, I hope that you continue to have a great rest of your day and you stay safe. Again, thank you so much for this interview.